Sunday, the Grizzlies suspended John Moran from all off-season team activities pending the league office's review of the video that surfaced over the weekend of him waving a gun in a vehicle. Less than two months after Moran and Silver met to discuss a similar incident that resulted in an eight-game suspension. Here's Commissioner Adam Silver's reaction yesterday with our Malika Andrews. We talked directly about the consequences first before we got to a subsequent um, potential to have done something wrong. We were very focused on the misconduct that was in front of us at the time. And, and frankly, most of our conversation was about how incredibly serious the first incident was of waving you know, a firearm on, you know, on social media. Honestly, I was shocked when I saw this weekend that video. Now, we're in the process of investigating it. Um, and we'll figure out exactly what happened to the best we can then. It's again, it's the video's a bit grainy and all that, but I'm assuming the worst, you know, and, uh, but we'll, we'll, fi we'll figure out, you know, exactly what happened there. John Morant released the following statement last night. I know I've disappointed a lot of people who have supported me. This is a journey and I recognize there's more work to do. My words may not mean much right now, but I take full accountability for my actions. I'm committed to continuing to work on myself. Chris, how hard should the NBA come down on Ja? Very. I mean, words are words. They mean nothing. I mean, the fact that he only got an eight-game suspension the first time at the end of the regular season and then spent 96 hours in some counseling center is a disgrace. That's ridiculous. This is a serious offense for a league that takes itself very seriously with gun control. We saw Steve Kerr last year get all upset with the Ovaldi thing. We mm -hmm. spent a lot of time on that. And they like to be above the political... They want to be on the social right side of the social circle and political culture and all those things. And I'm all for that. But if you're going to sit there now and tell me, well, we're, this is not going to be... We're not going to stand for this. Adam Silver, who has a tendency to be way too friendly to the players, way too... Come down hard. I don't want to see him into January. I know that sounds hard. You cannot have your star guard waving guns the way this country is right now with guns, with people getting killed left and right all over the place. How about Texas? Have we seen that in the last month or two? And we got John Moran for the second time in a month and a half after that joke of a rehab thing, waving a gun in a vehicle? And then I got Silver says, what we got to do investigating. No, you don't. You know, we'll see you in January. 40 games. Show some toughness. Don't be friends with the players. Show some toughness. If you want to be considered the league that does the right thing, the right thing in here is I'll see you at the, half, at the halfway mark. Go to a proper rehab center. You go for 30 days. You don't go for 96 hours. You go for 30 days, which he didn't do the first time. He made the whole thing a joke the first time. And the NBA allowed that to happen. And then off he, go, off he goes again. And then Silver's explanation last night to me, yeah, this seems to be serious. I was shocked. Shocked! He only gave him a take game. To, he was in rehab for th 10 minutes. Shocked. How could he be shocked? So I was very down on it, and he's got to go for a while. I know that's a hard thought. I said the same thing on radio. I'm not backing off it. 40 games. See you at the halfway point of the year. When we talked about this yesterday, one of the things that I mentioned was we're, we weren't privy to the conversations uh, when he was first suspended. We didn't know if they had discussed you know, another infraction, what the penalty would be. And it, it seems pretty clear from that conversation between Adam and Malika that that actually wasn't discussed. It wasn't discussed if there was another incident. And I'll, I'll say this again, you know, in both these uh, gun-waving incidents on IG Live, th there has been no law that's been broken, as, as far as we know. Colorado police investigated, no law was broken. Uh, I, assuming this is in Tennessee, Open carry allowed in that state, assuming he has a permit for whatever it may be, no law has been broken. Um, the thing that I, the reason I bring that up, it is very clear in our CBA what happens if you fail for, you fail a drug test for performance handing drugs or a street drug, a narcotic. It's very clear. It's this amount of games. Uh, it's very clear if you get a certain amount of technicals or a certain amount of flagrants, how many how much you're going to be suspended. And so that's where I think a 40-game suspension, the precedence for that, for not breaking a law, again, we can go into the backstory of the incident with uh, the teenager, Jaws claiming self-defense, that the teenager threw the ball in his face. 
Uh, we can go into the incident at the mall when he yelled at his security guard. We can go into the incident uh, with the uh, Indiana Pacers traveling party. As far as we know, all of these things have been investigated and no law has been broken. I'm not condoning the behavior. I'm not saying there should be no punishment. There should be. There should be consequences. You are the face of the league. You are representing the NBA. You are a role model to young kids. All of that, I don't think half a season is the right answer. And the last point I want to make, because you bring this up, the, the, the guns on social media, we talk about consequences. Look, in our country right now, gun culture is pervasive. It's pervasive. We've got mass shooting after mass shooting, and nobody's doing a damn thing about it. So I get why we're so sensitive to this right now. But there's no consequence for Greg Abbott telling his constituents that they should go buy more guns, and then we have mass shooting after mass shooting in Texas. There's no consequence for an elected Tennessee official to send out a Christmas card holding AR-15s with his young family, and then there's a shooting in his very district. There's no consequences to that. So why are we, why are we trying to lay down the hammer on a 23-year-old who didn't break a law. Explain that to me. The reason why John Moran should get 41 games, and according to that source, close to the commissioner, he likely will get 41 games, has nothing to do with mass shootings, guns, politics, or anything else about gun culture. The only reason John Moran should get 41 games is because he made the NBA and the commissioner look stupid. They gave Jaw a light punishment of only eight games and made sure he could come back to the playoffs. And Ja Morant completely took advantage of that. Considering Jaw's behavior, that punishment was a joke. He's been involved in so many incidents in the offseason and on video that they should have punished him more to begin with. But the fact that they let him off easy and he did it again means that they need to punish him for a longer period of time. And it's not going to be just 10 games or 15 games because then he will do the same thing again. It has to be a really long suspension and they already said that they're planning on doing so. It has nothing to do with him breaking a law or being 23 years old. It has everything to do with the fact that he had a sit down with the commissioner of the NBA and the commissioner told him to stop doing what he's doing because it's going to harm him in the future. And John Morant walked away from that interview and made the decision to do the exact same thing again. There is no other sport, career, or place that would put up with the same behavior over and over again and continue to give out small punishments. You can't compare Ja to a criminal or someone that's the same age as him. The reality is, he is an NBA player. He is much bigger than your normal 23-year-old. So why are you comparing him to these other people and saying, well, he didn't break a law? We all know that. He's not going to jail. He was never going to jail. We know he didn't break a law. Most player suspensions have nothing to do with broken laws. They have to do with the integrity of the NBA. They are NBA players making millions of dollars. That's who you compare him to, and he's the only one doing this. So take laws, mass shootings, gun culture, take all of that out of it. The only reason John Morant is getting a stiffer suspension is because he's done this before, and he's had much more previous incidents than just this. But that's all I have for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. How long should John Morant be suspended for? And leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more NBA content just like this. And I will see you in the next upload.